I'm not sure if this is the right word, but I just feel like I find myself being lazy. I find myself slacking. Um, and I'm not I'm not sure. I, I don't think it's entirely a bad thing because when I'm lazy, I I I was able to just let my body to relax and. I can just wait for the energy to come back and just do the things that either I should do or I want to do. But I'm also um, afraid that I slip too much into uh, <laughs> relaxation. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know how to phrase this question. Uh, I you know just... that I'm a big fan of lazy. <laughs> yes. Yes. That in fact, uh, lazy is something that we have to remember to do because mm -hmm. we have been trained to not be lazy. Mm -hmm. We've been trained to be productive. Yes. Well, you don't have to be productive. Mm -hmm. I mean, humanity has productive itself into destroying the planet Earth. Yes. That's how productive we are. Yes. Digging out the coal, polluting the water, polluting the ocean, polluting the air, polluting yes. the temperature. We're really, really good at not being lazy. <laughs> yes. Yes. That in fact, the crops that we have um, use a lot of poison. So we're killing animals, we're killing all kinds of things simply because we're stupid and we're stupid because we're greedy. And so I'm I'm quite a fan of lazy. Can you remember to be lazy? Yes. I think I can. <laughs> when your life is lazy, there's not much to it. It's when your daddy is yelling at you that you're lazy and he wants you to cut the grass. You know, when I was a teenager, that's the story that my dad would call me lazy. He wanted me to cut the grass. Hmm. That in fact, um, he actually got me a job and put me into business of cutting other people's grass. And that um, uh, later probably many, many years later, I understood it finally more correctly that he called me lazy because I was reluctant to cut the grass, but he was the one who wanted the grass to be cut and he wanted me to do it. In that regard, he was the one who was lazy because he didn't cut the grass. He got me to do it. And that's our society, is getting other people to do the work. Yes. The uh -huh. tennis shoes are not made by the guy who owns the tennis shoe factory. Mm -hmm. They're made by people who think, who have been lied to, who have been told that they need a job. Yes. Um, and they don't even get to bear, bear the tennis shoes that they make. The people yes. who make iPhones can't afford an iPhone. Yeah. Yeah, the factory worker. Yes. Um, I'm kind of a bit confused with the, the right effort in the word Buddhism, because um, what I understood is when changing our thought, we require a certain amount of effort. Um, All right, well, here's a point. Mm -hmm. At the end of a job, the last thing that they do is put the tools away. After they have fixed the car, they put the tools away. After we cut the grass with the lawnmower, we put the lawnmower away, right? The putting of the tools away, the putting of the lawnmower and the uh, wrenches and all of that, 
is the sign or the signal that the job has been done. Yes. So what we can practice now is keep putting the tools away. Stop holding them and tinkering and with stuff. Just put the tools away. And now yes. the job is done. Mm -hmm. So we have to remember that this wrench that I'm holding, I don't need to hold it. I can go put it back in the toolbox. I can put it away. That signals that the job has been done. If you can put away the wholesome thoughts, or excuse me, put away the unwholesome <laughs> thoughts, put away all the tools, and declare the job is done. That in fact we are, uh, we live our lives according to the idea of having a to-do list. Oh, I've got this to do and I've got that to do. Yes. Yes. What we actually can do with Anapanasati is start to form a don't do it list. Mm. Mm. Don't argue. Don't complain. Don't get frustrated. Don't get afraid. Don't get excited. Yes. And so when we start to get excited, we can say, wait a minute, chill out, cool down. Put that excitement tool away. When we get frustrated, we can say, wait a minute, there's no reason to be frustrated. I can just chill. Yes. It, it also sounds, because um, frustration puts me in a state of dukkha, and, but it also sounds like excitement will also put me in a state of dukkha if I'm not careful. Is that? Um, something the Buddha teaches. I'm not sure. It's because um, it's not sublime. So there's nothing to do and there's no place to go. And we have to remember that. Now, I think is what you might be talking about is a kind of laziness in the sense of, oh, well, I can just keep this wrench in my hand and keep turning stuff because it's too much work to go put this wrench back in the toolbox. I guess so. Right. Yeah. We're talking about now right noble effort. We do have to put the right effort in, but it's right noble effort. Most of the time we're putting in the wrong effort and we're putting in too much wrong effort. OK, and it's good to point out that right noble effort is doing the least amount of work possible to actually get the job done. And actually what that means then is stop using the wrench and go put it back in the toolbox. Stop giving yourself to do things a to-do list and say mm -hmm. I'll be happy when I finish the to-do list because there's no end of the to-do list. I agree. <sighs> so the right thing to do is to tear up the to-do list or better still just set it down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tearing up the to-do list is too much work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just set it down. That's all there is to it. And we need to practice that over and over and over again because we're in quite a habit of doing stuff. And as you get good at not doing stuff, your whole life will begin to change. But you don't have to go change your life. That's a lot of work. All you have to do is change this moment. Yes. That's what a lot of Buddhism gets messed up because they, the people who are un, unsure of what the actual teachings are, they think that, oh, I've got to get my life straightened out. I got to get the whole show done. And that's a huge amount of work. Yes. It's daunting. It takes years. It may take them lifetimes. Yes. And that's not noble effort at all. That's actually uh, too much effort. Mm. Right noble effort is to do the least amount of possible. 
Do you know why we use the word noble? I kind of do. I don't think I do. I don't. All right. Do you know what a noble gas is? Oh, yes. Yes. Um, All right. I think it's so. like argon and radon yes. and xenon. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is it about argon? It's uh, it makes so it I, noble. It's it's not attached to any other atom. Pardon? Uh, it's not attached to any other atom. I think right. It has um, a balanced number of electrons in their valence. Yes. 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 Right. Yes. They're balanced. They've got the middle path, and because yes. they're balanced, they don't interact with other things. Yes. Oh, oh they my God. don't yes. interact. They stay aloof. They stay up on it. They stay on top of their environment. Mm. To where nitrogen is not quite noble. That's why you have nitric oxide, nitrogen oxide, uh, um, nitrates, all of that kind of stuff, because nitrogen does interact. And carbon also interacts. And oxygen interacts. But the noble yes. gases, they don't interact. Yes. Understanding that, if you can come to the state of your own mind and not interacting, not making compounds, not making complexities, but keeping things simple because you stay out of mixing up with other things. So that's why we use the word noble. Not because of uh, Aryan race and Hitler and all of that kind of stuff. We're using the yeah. word noble in its true sense. Of not getting involved. Okay, yeah. so let us imagine that two guys are having an argument and the third guy is standing there. And as they argue, they argue more and more and they get in a fight and they start wrestling with each other. And now they're in the mud wrestling. And that guy, the third guy, is just standing there. He's the noble. He's not getting in the fight. Yes. Now, one team will say, oh, come help me. You got to vote for me. You got to become a Democrat. And the other guy says, oh, I need help. You got to vote for me. I'm a Republican. But the noble, and by the way, the noble is not independent. There's four kinds of people. There is the Democrats, the Republicans, the independents that are in the fight. The independents are saying, yeah, I'll root for him, and then I'll root for the other guy. And I'm back and forth, but I'm in it. And then the noble is the one who does not care. He's not involved in the fight. I've heard lawyers talk about it with the concept of having a dog in the fight. You don't have a dog in the fight. So let the dogs fight because your dog is not in the fight. If you don't have a dog in the fight, then you don't care what happens to the other dogs. But if you have a dog in the fight, you want your dog to win. Yes. This is what we're talking about with the idea of nobility. Now don't get involved with the world. Stay out of the world. Jesus said it in this way. Be in the world, but not of the world. Yes. Which means that you can pass through. Another one, if we want to stay into physics, there's a neutrino. Have you ever heard of neutrinos? Um, I've heard of it, but I'm not sure of it. I, All I, right. I, neutrinos just go right through things. They don't get stopped. They don't collide. So the neutrinos are running right through us. They're in the world, but they're not of the world because they don't interact with any of the other elements. Mm. Or it's just a particle. Mm. It doesn't weigh anything. It has no mass. Mm. 
and therefore it's got very little energy. It's lazy. And this is what we're practicing. A kind of um, independent that's interdependent that we live in the world, but we don't uh, pick up and carry around worldly things. Yes. yes. This is why you, you probably heard me talk about everyone's an emperor of their own pile of dirt. Everyone's an emperor of their own pile of dirt. The problem is most people are buried under their own pile of dirt. They're involved with it. They're covered with it. It's all over them. Yes. And some people then are trying to claw their way out of it. They go to therapy. They go to church. They go to um, to Vipassana retreats and they're trying to claw their way out of it. And then there is just sitting on top of your pile of dirt. Having a vantage point, seeing what there is, seeing reality as it is being on top of your world. The Pali word for that is Lokatara. Lokatara. And guess what? It's only an attitude. The attitude of being buried under your pile of dirt, the attitude of clawing your way out of the pile of dirt, or the attitude of being on top of your world. Yes. Two of them are losers. The one who's buried under it, oh, poor me, I need help. And the one is, I, I'll be able to, I'll get out somehow, I'll find a way. And then there is the one who is already on top of the world. We got it made. Hey, I'm the boss here. Truly become the emperor because we're on top of our world. This is an attitude. And guess what? The emperor is lazy. He's not trying to crawl his way out of anything anymore. And he's not buried under his own pile of dirt. So, yes, I'm a fan of lazy. I, to me, it also sounds like um, for me to be truly lazy and it's for me to befriend all this, um, I don't know, this unwholesome thoughts or this unwholesome feeling I had inside of me. I've been thinking of we um Dharmato, you, you teach me about this idea of catching the Mara or to, to spot it uh, and then congratulating oneself. Um I was thinking um because I read some some other Buddhism uh, practitioner that they have this idea of befriending this negative part of ourselves. Um Oh absolutely. Not... You're the one who hates that negative part of yourself. Why even call it negative? It's because you've got rules, you've got standards, you're yes. told to judge things. Yes. And in fact, you um, uh, probably have heard the story of Adam and Eve, but you've heard it in the uh, Christian sense of talking snakes and the girl did it first and losing yes. paradise. God kicked him out of paradise. You've heard that story. All yes. right. But the yes. real story is, is that Adam and Eve ate of the fruit of knowledge, which and the word fruit here is putting up with the results of judgments of good yes. and bad. Yes. Yes. And so we get thrown out of our own paradise. Why? Because we judge it. It used to be a paradise until I started picking it apart, yes. trying to find out what was wrong with it. It's the yes. judgment. Yes. Okay. So when you start uh looking at the reality of who you are and what you are you're okay yes but you have been taught to be critical of yourself to see negative things that you got to get rid of yes. having original sin you're originally broken <laughs> okay yes. That's mm -hmm. a mentality that is very common in the West, and we can change that mentality into, you're already okay. 
Ivan, you're already okay. Stop being critical of yourself and start nurturing yourself. When you become satisfied, you naturally stop doing wrong behavior. If you are already in a good state and you don't want anything, then you're unlikely to go kill somebody to get it. If you're already satisfied and in good shape, there's unlikely you're going to go take something away from someone unless they give it to you. So the precepts actually become very easy to do when you're already in that noble state of everything's okay. It's only when we've already judged that, oh, I am not good enough because I don't have a Mercedes. Let me go steal one. (laughs) I need that car. Right? But if you're already satisfied, you don't need anything. Hmm. What we've got now is good enough. Yes. Um, Damato, what about the label of unwholesome thoughts? Or sometimes people say wrong speech. Doesn't that also require a certain amount of judgment? We use the word hum- unwholesome uh, along with the word hindrances. Yes. Okay. And hindrances means that you're hindered by things Mm. and what does Mm. that hindered is is that you're hindered from being in a good state of satisfaction your unwholesome thoughts are thoughts of judgment and when we stop judging when we come out of warnings and desires we can come to the state of being satisfied and when we're satisfied then we don't hurt anybody Yes. This yes. is why we have right effort. There is amount of effort to take, but the effort to take is to get the mind in a good shape, not the effort of doing all that stuff that needs to be done. So then I can be happy. No, just be happy now. Yes. Take the shortcut. Take the easy way out. The easy <laughs> man, the easy guide to enlightenment. Yes. Yes, uh, it's a. Uh, I, I just a quick question about the practice of anapanasati. Uh, okay. Um. I oh, well, first of all, I mean, I've been doing quite regularly. That's, that's something I'm, I'm very happy about. Um, like three or four times a day. Um, but there's a part of me, once like I think. Yes, I, I I mean I, I mean I'm not I'm I'm saying this in a in a wholesome way like I want to do more, um but <laughs> maybe I mean, this kind of just goes back to this idea of laziness <laughs> like um I was like yeah this is this is good enough but I, I feel like I want to to do a bit more uh, I'm not sure this is so contradictory I, I'm not sure how should I go all right about. when those thoughts come up just set them aside. That's picking up that tool again, thinking there's more to do. The answer is no. There's nothing more to do. The job is that needs to be done is to put the tools away. After the work is finished, so let the work be done, let it be finished. But we are always thinking about, oh, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. Well, that means that you're not satisfied because you think there's got to be more. All we need to do then is to become satisfied. And when we're satisfied, things are good enough. There's nothing more to do. Mm -hmm. The only reason that there's more to do is because you're not satisfied. (laughs) Yes. um, I admittedly, there's a part of me is attached to that wholesome that like I I want more of it. (laughs) So I want to do more of it. Right, you want more satisfaction because you don't have enough satisfaction. Mm, yes. Mm-hmm. Ah. <laughs> ah, this is so yeah. frustrating. Yeah, so when you see those thoughts, I want more, you can say, well, I'm okay. I'm already all right. 
<laughs> I don't need anything else right now. I'm good enough. You keep practicing that way. Keep practicing that way. Keep practicing actually being satisfied. And soon enough, you'll gain the skills that that satisfaction goes deeper and deeper and deeper by practicing satisfaction. And when you say, I want more, you're not practicing satisfaction. Mm, 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 mm. You're practicing, I want more. Yes, yes. It's a, it sounds like the same hindrance, but only <laughs> on the meditation. Mm-hmm. Yes. So you take that insight and you go back practice again, being satisfied. And when you say, oh, what's more is there to do? The answer to that is everything's already okay. I don't need to do anything else. And yes. that satisfaction will grow. It'll get better. I'll give you one last point. Okay. Imagine that somebody wants to learn to play the piano. Yes. They go and buy piano books. They go and get a teacher. And then they spend all day long sitting in front of the piano playing with their <laughs> cell phone. <laughs> okay, I get it. They're not actually practicing the piano. They're playing with their cell phone, and that's not going to teach them to play. Just like satisfaction, you've got to actually practice satisfaction. You can't sit in front of satisfaction wanting to play more. Practice satisfaction. This is good enough. Keep telling yourself, oh, this is fine. I don't need anything else. Everything <coughs> is okay. And pretty soon the skills will grow and you'll get really, really good at being really satisfied. Yes, I, I see enough. I, I okay. see enough. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, let's finish the call then and you go practice. Yes. Give me a call in, uh, in a few days and check yes. in and we'll go at it again. Yes, thank you. I mean, I really enjoy our conversations. I really like you. You're a good friend. You too, Devon. Thank you. Be sure to come on to the Skype groups. Oh, yes, yes. I and, will. And, and publish something. Say, you know, go go, give your thoughts and ask questions and yes. find something in the literature that really strikes you well and post that. Make some friends. Yes, I will. Okay. I will do it. Oh, have you uh, signed up for the website? Oh, the Open Sangha, is it? Yes, the Open Sangha Foundation. Uh, I, I haven't, but I did visit it, but I haven't. I, yeah, sign I up and put your mm -hmm. photo in and fill out all the data. Yes, I will. I'll do that. Become our part of our uh, Sangha. Yes, I will do that. Thank okay. you. Okay, well, we'll see you.